blast the scammers de-risk into U.S. dollars. Or so invest, this invest a, it in a centralized exchange. Yeah, but even even then, as long as it didn't actually exit the fiat, it pumps all the market cap still. So this is weird mechanic in crypto where if people scam and they, okay, I have the perfect example for guys. You guys are going to love this. The U.S. government just seized a billion dollars from the uh, Silk Road hacker uh, that is just brand new, just came out a few days ago. Guess what? He just sat on the 50,000 Bitcoin. He didn't spend them. So if a hacker comes along and sucks up a billion dollars of your stuff and never sells it, similar to Satoshi, it just pumps the market caps. And it never hurts the uh, price. So, you know, a lot of these centralized uh, coins like ERC-20s, like BNB, for instance, you go look at the ownership cap table and it's like the top 100 addresses own 90% of the coins. And it doesn't matter what ERC-20 you pick, but BNB's made all-time highs versus Bitcoin consistently. BNB has been a better performing asset than Bitcoin. Well, lol, that's pretty interesting, right? So now look, there's there's the counterparty risk there, like they're doing a burn, they might not burn anymore, all this different stuff. But like, my point is that centralized ownership is very often amazing for price performance, but people confuse it with centralized network, which is bad for censorship resistance. And so for price pump, you prefer centralized ownership. What's the least centralized uh, ownership coin in crypto? Bitcoin. And what's the least gains in crypto? I don't know, Bitcoin, only 3 x in five years. Well, that sucks. Yeah, you've got right? to add an element of risk adjusted to everything. Sure, 100%, sure. But look, when stuff like... So my point is, this is the best performing asset class that's ever existed. It has nearly 100% uptime. You're getting free airdrops out the yin-yang. Pulse Chain is going to give you a free copy of everything on the Ethereum network. And we got 10 or 20, well, I don't know, maybe 10 airdrops during the last bull run. Where else in the real, in the real world do you get actual free money? You don't. The real world does not have free money on offer. But in crypto, I swear to God, there's actual real free money. It's wild. It's like insane. How lucky are we? And I mean, so if the government would just take its grubby, dirty hands off of our amazing technology, stop with the regulatory horror of making it illegal to sell the stuff to your friend, let exchanges flourish and have American customers, and let capitalism and competition do what it does best and give users choice and they choose the better thing we'd be glorious why do you think everyone used ftx i mean ftx basically just came up because the founders of bitmex got arrested the guys that are fomo tards that want to go fomo hard didn't want to do it on bitmex anymore because the founders went to jail for a while and that's the only reason ftx came up basically is because it was considered a more play safe to fomo and to to get wrecked margin trading in my opinion um, right my opinion. So, look, long story short, there is no better performing asset in the history of mankind. There is no better uptime than 100% uptime. These features are amazing. The fact that you can get around evil governments doing capital control stuff that they might not should be doing, like North Korea or some other communist governments. The fact that you could leave a war-torn area like Ukraine with your money. The fact that if there's another war or a time of strife, you could pay to get your way out of those countries. There's just so many amazing things that crypto does that nothing else can do. It's one of the only things I know of in this world that can change man's relationship to government, and it will make less war. The government so goes to war. I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't I, uh, Piotr, I'd let you continue. I, I think you'll agree with me. I just wouldn't put all governments, I'll put government in general uh, in just in a basket of being evil. Like We had regulators come on. We had the, the ex-White ex House chief of staff, and he understood crypto. He supported decentralization and self-custody. So I think there's flaws in, in, in the current centralized world, but I don't know if even uh, – that crypto itself is still an experiment in my opinion. If you've I'm got sure a Richard grandma, they're stealing your grandma's money every single day. The government prints away the value of your grandma's money that she worked her whole life to save every single day. If you're a crippled person or you're on fixed income or you're on a, sal a pension, your life is totally ruined by the inflation of these guys printing away the value of all your money every single day. They're violating the rights of the citizens. They're violating their right to free speech. Hey, guess what, guys? Here's something that you know I'm a little bit pissed off about. I hear Hex influencers are getting subpoenas for promoting Hex. That really upsets me a lot, a lot, because Hex isn't a fucking security. It's truly 100% decentralized and launched totally complete and is uneditable and unchangeable. Period. So Richard, I've got a question for you then. 
Um, I think, you know, again, I agree with a fair amount of what you said. And it's actually, I really enjoyed the exchange between you uh, and Simon. And, you know, as I, as I say, I think we've got, what, 16,000 people in here. I'm going to represent probably a proportion of them, which is I'm a novice in this. I have very little, you know, in this industry. So from what I'm hearing from you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is um, that, you know, now in the aggregate scheme of things, everything is relative to when it first began. But that question leads to me is, so how do us newbies, again, if I'm role playing for some people, get involved? If things are continually getting in a way, you know, we're in a fluctuous period, it's volatile, there's a lot of concern, the encroachment of potentially regulation. And I might point out that a lot of your focus, which is fair enough, is to do with the United States, but it's going to be different in other parts of the world. China's not even, you know, allowing Bitcoin mining. Um, how do we, how do, you know, how do we navigate this period as, as people who want to get involved? They want to understand where to go, how to do it. What, what would you say to those people? Quite simply, I like, look, Kraken.com's got thin order books, but Jesse Powell that founded it is a cypherpunk, libertarian, believes in human rights, you know? So now he ain't CEO anymore. Hopefully whoever there is running it is still doing a good job. I don't like referring people to exchanges that have margin trading. They, they get wrecked. So, but if I had to on-ramp a new user, I'd either on-ramp them to Bitstamp, who apparently will AML KYC you to death and, and ask you the worst questions ever, or to Kraken that has margin trading, but at least has Monero. Now, how many exchanges have Monero? Almost none of them. Why? Because they're cowards. But Kraken has Monero because Kraken cares more about your ability to, to be anonymous, your ability to have privacy, your human rights. Privacy is a human right and you should never feel bad about using it. And anyone that would take it from you, ask them for their email password. Ask them to see their search history on YouTube and on uh, Google and see how quickly they care about privacy again. So I would, I would just tell a new user, look, set up an account on Kraken.com, install MetaMask on your phone, never give anyone your private keys, never give anyone your seed words. There is no support. Anyone that direct messages you is scamming you. If someone messages you and says there's support, they're scamming you. If someone messages on Twitter and says there's support, they're scamming you. Don't enter your private keys into a website ever. Do not, you act, do not approve weird dApps. Don't fall for fake giveaways. Don't fall for, I'm going to send you, you send one, you get two back, fake Elon Musk giveaways. Or lately, all these fake Uniswap liquidity bot giveaways. They're all scams. All you got to do is install MetaMask, save your 12 words, set up a Kraken.com account, wire some money to Kraken.com, buy Ethereum, and then swap that Ethereum to whatever you want using oneinch.io or match.xyz because it spreads your orders across all the available liquidity, gets you best order. Just uh, some quick breaking news that came from in from the block here. Um, a GOP lawmaker uh, that donated, well, that had been uh, given a campaign contribution of $5,000, which is the max, uh, typically uh, on, on these sorts of uh, contributions, uh, from, an, from an FTX executive. Um, he has now returned those funds, and he, he is dissing himself after the troubled crypto exchange filed for bankruptcy protection. Uh, it says here, FTX Digital Markets co-CEO Ryan Salame gave 5000 to Hearn Victory Fund, a joint fundraising committee with ties to Hearn's campaign, uh, the Help Elect Republicans Now Leadership PAC, and the National Republican Congressional Committee. Representative Hearn has donated the money from FTX, Hearn's campaign said. Uh, it did not specify which organization received Hearn's donations. Um, uh, so Salami was a major political do donor during the 2022 midterm cycle, it says here. He spent millions to support more than a dozen Republicans with his American Dream Federal Action Super PAC. Salami also gave individual contributions to many lawmakers and candidates. So when are they going to get back the $50 million that Sam yeah, Bankman-Fried exactly. gave them to double our taxes? Yeah, exactly. I was just hey, about to the say. Way, uh, guys, Tara, <laughs> Tara is back up, and uh, let her have her question. That's actually perfect. I can hear Richard now, and I think I can hear everyone else. So thank you guys so much for working with me. I know this is extremely frustrating when the tech isn't working properly, but I appreciate the work you're doing uh, to make it work out. Uh, really quick, I don't want to keep you, uh, Richard, but I wanted to ask you just what you guys were talking about, um, what you think you know should be the recourse for these types of things. Should there be... Um, you know, payback? Should there be money sent back from political parties that accepted 
huge donations um, from, so you know, funny. Sam and FTX. What what are your thoughts on that? And and I also wanted to ask you about the SEC, um, you know, as being kind of the governing body who, you know, has been, you know, preaching regulation. Um, but at the same time, do we trust the SEC, Gary Gensler, uh, who is obviously, well, in my opinion, bought and paid for to do the, the job um, fairly? Well, good news. Uh, they already figured this out. It's called fungibility. So I think it was in the 1800s. Uh, some guy got his money stolen, and he wrote down the serial numbers of the bills. And then uh, he went to the bank, and he's like, hey, you've got my stolen property. Uh, these are the bills, numbers that were stolen from me. And there was a big court case about it, you know, a long time ago. And it basically said that to have a functioning currency, you can't have people doubting the provenance and origin of the currency because it would cripple all commerce basically and you'd have to create a database of less good and more good coins and have risk profiles and a bunch of other horrible crap and so basically in the fiat currency world once someone steals your money it ain't your money no more and so if someone steals your money and gives it away to political party it's gone you ain't getting it back if someone steals your money and spends it on slushies at 7-eleven you ain't getting that money back from 7-eleven it would break the fungibility of the currency. So you, you can claw back money from the bankrupt entity through the bankrupt process, and you'll discover you're an unsecured creditor and that the secured creditors get preferential treatment and are made whole before you, and you'll get whatever's left, and you can hope there's something left. So in, in the case of Mt. Gox, there is something left, and users will get a lot of money back at some point. Even there, there's a tragedy of the commons, because the trustee gets paid by not giving your money back. As soon as the trustee gives you your money back, he ain't got a job no more. And he likes getting paid a lot of money. So he wants to drag on the process. Well, and that's not getting, quite true, right? Like in, in, any, in any bankruptcy case, um, you know, that there is a time horizon for that. Um, yes, they make money, but at some point they actually do divest the funds to those who are. I mean, you think it takes 10 years for Gox to give its creditors their money, bro? They're like, they aren't purposely withholding them for a set amount of fees per year for one or two people holding them. At this rate of inflation, it'll be worth it. Reasonable value. 10 years ain't reasonable. It's it's unreasonable. I, anyway. I'm not saying it's reasonable or not. I'm just saying that the, that it, the that fees for one or two people for holding them is not the catalyst for them withholding assets from people. But that, the, point, still, the point is still the same. But absolutely so I hope same. you're right, but you have a higher opinion of lawyers than me, bro. So uh, basically... Yeah, the are absolutely horrific in bankruptcy. It is awful. Yep. So, so basically, like, once you get jacked, um, you, you're going to stay jacked. Like, in crypto, when you lose your money, man, it usually don't come back. So all them bridges that got hacked, like, I don't know, dude. I don't think that money ever came back. So a lot of these, like, in, like uh, inflation bugs, like XML had, XLM had an inflation bug. Uh, Ravencoin had an inflation bug. Hackers just, they had a 10% of the supply inflation bug. Hackers just dumped it on exchange. You get that money back, it's gone. Like, so what would I like to see? I'd like to see people never lose money, and if they do, to be made whole. But who's supposed to make you whole, right? Like this idea that someone was saying that like there should be a Holy bailout Jesus fund. Make you whole. Yeah, there shouldn't be a bailout fund. What doesn't sit well, Richard, for me is when the regulating body is um, receiving large sums of money from potentially one side of the aisle, I guess you could say, um, and then they're in charge of regulation, you know, what's stopping them from regulating in favor of certain things that should not be allowed because oh, their pockets are being lined that way. I, I 100% agree with you that governance in the general uh, electoral system is broken. So I, I have a solution on how to fix that. So the simple, I won't say it's simple, but we need smarter people running for office, which means we need to pay them more. Because their pay sucks. No, we need new office, though. We need just decentralization. That's what we need. Yeah, but we also need the other stuff, too. Like, you know, we, we need both. You know, so, Richard, I didn't, I didn't think there's anything wrong with the executives, um... and that's what they do. 
there's just nothing but employees. So they don't even propose laws or anything. You know, the laws comes from the referendums and most of the people vote no because you don't want to have a pile of laws. You want to have as, as least laws. As yeah, but you guys possible. approved the COVID vaccine uh, restrictions. Yeah, so, probably, but this was an overreach. And uh, now there's a referendum that's going to come uh, in order to never have that again, you know. So, you know, it, it, it takes time sometimes. I was rooting for you. I was like, I there's think, no way that people would vote for this. But yeah, then you I think an yeah, important, no, I can't an believe it either, but whatever. An, an important distinction, um, the, the word bailout is charged because you think of a government bailout, which is theft, because that's just printed um, and you pay for it through inflation. But there's not much wrong with a free market bailout. Um, those Except for the better. centralization. Yeah. Except sure. for the centralization. Yeah, sure, but it, it shouldn't be prevented if people want to create a free no, market sure. solution. Um, yeah, it's not it's really a bailout. Out. You're just you're just buying some assets that are distressed. Like it's there's nothing bailout about it. You're just buying something that sucks. You're like, oh, it sucks. It's, it's like not worth as much now. Okay, I'll buy it at the suck price. <laughs> it, the problem is just when you print money it. in order to do that because that's that's just um, a hot potato where you're just paying with inflation. That's just it. I mean, guys, the solution is like, the, don't get punched in the face. You're like, but I got punched in the face. It hurts. You're like, yeah, you'd have to stop getting punched. You were given all the tools possibly necessary to not get punched. There, there's nothing easier in the world to, than not to have had this problem. I and anyone else I know has literally had no fallout at all from this. As a matter of fact, actually, all of this crap happening just makes my predictions come true quicker. So the band can get repped off quicker. So exactly. like, and I want to I want to ask you for another prediction, if I may. Let's assume nothing much changes, right? There will be all kinds of regulation. Where do you see crypto realistically in five years from now? I think you'll have 150k Bitcoin. I think you'll have uh, you know. 100k ethereum maybe like i'm just pulling these numbers off the top of my head like so if bitcoin's last bull cycle did a 3x maybe because it'll be a heavier weight like if it dumps far enough like if it exceeds the 85 percent downside target because money got more expensive then you might just see another 3x so like you might just see maybe from 70k to 200k so like 150 to 200k i feel are like conservative reasonable estimates for bitcoin's next bull run which should be starting anytime soon if they pivot and stop printing money. Yeah, so, exactly. It also depends on, on on how much money they print. You know, it, it works a bit like gold. It's not that gold is taking any value. It was $35 an ounce in 71. But you, it's just that they're sending the fiat so much in the drain that we now have 1700 even with manipulation, according to my opinion. But uh, yeah, I mean, it depends if they print because the, the big risk here, guys, and this is a tail event, is like I said, it, it would be a, a massive deleveraging because, you know, just as much as there is so much leverage on the fake market cap and pump and dump and all the shit coins, uh, the, the, the traditional market is the same. You have $800 trillion with a T uh, of derivatives and uh, none of those are, are like back, you know, so... So here's here's the funny part. Wait, 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 wait. Richard, you just uh, you just um, you just made a made a, made a mistake. Um, I heard you say earlier that you thought Ethereum will surpass Bitcoin in value, but now you said Bitcoin 150, Ethereum 100. So which one is it? Well, Ethereum maxed out at 5k. 5k to 100 is a 20x. Bitcoin from 70K to 200 is a 3X. So that's a 7X performance in Ethereum's favor, looking at all-time high to all-time high. Guys, I got a prediction. I all got right. Dogecoin beating the performance of Bitcoin anytime right now. I, because yeah, most, if you have everything's going to go, gonna be Bitcoin. If you have to go, like, like my theory is this, okay? Just uh, let me lay it out in two sentences. Theory number one, they're all shit coins. It's all speculation. It's not money. You guys are blind. And then number two is if I were to go fully degenerate, then let's not half-ass it. Let's go full degeneracy. And then in that case, you go and buy some Dogecoin and then you end up with what you were looking for. You know, the only bag of coins I have is like the most degenerate shit coins I can possibly get because they do the job of being the, the, the speculation. You know, Bitcoin is not going to do 10,000x once again. 
but but Dogecoin, the 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 simulation we live in is so bloody absurd, uh, and COVID proved it. That you know, I'm thinking, why not? So plus you add uh, uh, Elon Musk coming in and just basically saying, you know what? Let's let's uh, let's mind fuck everybody. I mean, I can see that. That's my that's my thesis. My my big investment thesis. What do you think? I think your thesis is called scams pump hardest. Lol. I mean, you're, you're promoting a you're promoting a logo change coin. It's like, okay, dude. So let me tell you what I think is going to happen. I think what we are facing is the biggest financial economic crisis in since the great depression i think yeah. what's going to happen is we'll see a massive crash in the global markets we're going to see massive inflation moving into hyperinflation and i think that the crypto space will not be unaffected by it i think we're going to go through a number of really really difficult years and in that process, people are going to demand an alternative. They are going to say, you fucked us. Your system that you put on us didn't work. We want something else. And that is when I think crypto will really take off. Uh, 100% I agree, man. When you, say, when you say crypto, can you define what you mean by crypto? Does that you know, mean 